Welcome to FITM and the Black Design Collective, creating a safe space and building community. I'm so excited that you guys are here. I am your host for this next hour. We have some great guests that we're going to have this conversation about. So I'm, I'm so excited that you're here. You're going to get a great wealth of knowledge. Uh, we've got uh, guests that come from different POVs. So without further ado, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to introduce my, my guests one at a time. Um, first guest I'm going to introduce to you guys uh, is TJ Walker. TJ Walker is the co-founder of the Black Design Collective. He's also the co-founder of Cross Colors. He, uh, he's a FITM a faculty member. He's, he's, been he's been teaching here for over 20 years. Uh, and uh, TJ is a, he has a degree, for, an MFA from um, Louisiana Tech as well as a bachelor's from Delta State University. So welcome, TJ. Uh, and our next panelist, is her name is Sasha. And Sasha is a textile designer, fashion designer. Uh, she's also a mixed media uh, artist, which I'm gonna love to ask her, like, what, what is that? Cause that sounds hot to me. Uh, she also is a, a graduate from FITM with, with textile and slash fashion design as her major. Uh, and she works and she's done collaborations with Lululemon, um, the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. My Eagles lost, but I'm definitely a Super Bowl. Uh, we were there. And also with Netflix. So um, that's going to be exciting. I really want to hear um, what she has uh, to say about that. In addition, she has done um, work with the California Institute of the Arts and has, has, had, has experience dealing with Parsons in Paris. Oh my God, that, that's, that's exciting too. And then, and then lastly, but certainly not least, uh, Rocky. Rocky is, Rocky is the president of, of FITM's Black Student Union. She's also a member of Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Uh, Rocky, major, her major is visual communication uh, at FITM. And her goal is to uh, be a stylist and a interior designer. So welcome, welcome my panelists. Wow, this is so exciting. Uh, for you guys to, to be here. Um, if you just uh, take yourself off a of mute and just say hey to, to, the, to the audience, that would be great because you guys are so special. They might not think that you're actually real human beings here. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hey. So, so cool. So, so what I want to do now that I introduce you, I'm like, I want to kind of go around the horn again. And I just want you guys to, you know, to give us a little bit, a little bit more thorough uh, dig into your, in, into your bio. So with that, if you don't mind, because I see uh, TJ's on our second little tier there, T the tier there, I'm sorry. Um, TJ, can you just share a little a, a more about your story, please? Yes, yeah, not a problem. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, FITM, and thank everyone else for allowing us to have the opportunity to do this. Uh, again, my name is TJ Walker. I am a um, professor at FITM. Actually, FITM was the first place that I taught um, when I started my teaching career uh, after completing my degrees and coming out to Los Angeles. Um, and I teach um, Illustrator, uh, Photoshop in those classes too, as well as some uh, other classes as well with the, with the program. Primarily in the menswear program now uh, okay. with uh, FITM. Um, I, um, I have a career as a designer uh, for the clothing industry. Uh, and that was um, spearheaded and, and, and took off with the brand Cross Colors. I don't know if you guys know what that brand is. It was originated in the 90s and now it's back again. And we also have product in um, stores like Zoomies and Nordstrom's and uh, other stores. We have celebrities like Cardi B and Bruno Mars and other entertainers that wear our product. Uh, here are some pictures of our new product that's current uh, that some of the uh, artists from uh, record labels are wearing. And this is from our photo shoot that we've done as well uh, in-house. We have a and this is a remake of our desert shoot that we had in the 90s, but we remade it uh, with some models for today, wearing some of our vintage pieces uh, out in the lake beds uh, out there in Palmdale, um, California. Um, the, the brand itself has a long, uh, it's pretty much a legacy brand, we like to call it now. And the premise is, and the tagline is clothing without prejudice. And we put that tagline there because that tagline is very important to us to make sure that we were very much aligned with inclusion, even in the 90s, as far as our brand is concerned, uh, and creating a place where people will feel comfortable, but also a brand where people will feel comfortable buying as well. And we also have, and I, 
you know, with, with the Cross Colors brand and because of we felt so important about having, you know, um, uh, helping creatives in my career as an educator, I really wanted to be involved with something else outside of Cross Colors and myself, and you can see here Ruthie Carter from Black Panther, Angela Dean, who designs for the likes of Patti LaBelle and other entertainers, and also Kevin Hall, who also is an alumni of FITM, uh, who designed for Halston and has his own collection now, Kevin Hall Collection. And we got together and created a um, organization called Black Design Collective, which was the premise of helping creatives of color navigate the industry of fashion. So that's kind of a, a little overview. And this is the space that we have, our creative center connected to Black Design Collective, where we also have, a, a, this, is, this is, I guess you can say, and also this is our space where we can do fashion shows, event space as well, that's connected to our creative center also. And I'll talk a little bit more about that a little later when okay. we get to talk about the space as well. Okay. And Sasha, before you start, so I wanna give a shout out. Uh, Sunrise Florida is in the house. Pasadena, California is in the house as well as LA. So uh, folks keep, keep throwing them in the chat. You know, I'm definitely looking uh, to give you guys some shout outs. So go ahead, Sasha, if you could share some of your story, please. Yeah, uh, my name's Sasha. I am from the North Bay area and I got into textile design and fashion di design here at FITM. Um, my background's actually mixed media and painting. Um, I started as a, I went to art school. I did, the, I did painting, I did murals, I did signage. And after getting a little burned out with that, I decided to go back to school um, in my 30s and learn technology and learn software and focus and kind of specialize the skills I have uh, by doing all the computer software programs and all that kind of stuff to be able to do textile design. And um, last year, just now learning fashion design, pattern drafting, cut and sew. Um, these are some of the yeah, I used to do custom jackets. That was before I actually knew how to do fashion sewing. I would taught myself how to do that. <laughs> um, this, these are pieces from my collection. Um, I did. I was in debut last year, and I designed all the prints from my collection, drafted all the patterns, and did about half of my cut and sew. So I learned all of this last year. Wow! Cool. And then I also did a project with um, Netflix and the school. We did a collaboration with uh, Netflix and FITM and they selected four students from campus who are minority and I got paired with Storm DeBarge. She was my model and influencer for this. And I designed her a custom red carpet look uh, based on Inspired, like inspired by the movie, by the costumes in the film, and in my own style, I do avant-garde streetwear. So, this is about the jacket. I did all the print and sewing and patterns for the skirt and the corset. Um, they're all hand beaded. They're all hand quilted. Um, yeah, it was a lot of work, and it was a very short deadline. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> oh, and most recently, um, I helped do all the back end for textile design and then cut and sew for the structure for the Super Bowl, which was in Arizona wow. last weekend or the weekend before. And these are massive structures. So setting up the files to be print ready. Um, these are, you know, five by or 20 by 70 feet panels of fabric lining up and registering. The print was hard, doing color swatches and testing, and then all the cut and sew we did here in downtown LA. Okay, excellent. Oh. And Rocky. Hi, everyone. I'm Rocky Rosier. I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself creatively. I'm still new to FITM, so my track record isn't as long as everyone else's, but I'm originally from New York City, so there's that. 
from the East Coast. Um, I've been what I call a creative my entire life. I've been expressing myself creatively since I was about three years old. It started with me just dressing myself and it turned to finding a passion for singing and dancing. Then around seven or eight years old, I realized I had a natural gift for writing and that goes for writing stories, poetry, anything like that. Then around nine, I learned I had an interest for instruments. And I also found out that I wanted to be a fashion designer. But at the time, I didn't actually want to make clothes. I just knew I had a way with clothes. And it wasn't until I was 13 years old that I found out about the term called styling. And so then I knew I wanted to be a stylist, but I didn't think you can go to school for fashion. So in middle school, they gave us this long paper of high schools and colleges. And I asked them if there was any like fashion schools on there. And they were like, yeah, of course. And I looked and I found FITM. But at the time, I didn't know what major I would pick because I had so many different fashion interests. So I got in touch with my advisor and she told me visual communications would fit for me. And ever since then, I've known that I wanted to be an interior designer and a stylist. And that's what I'm practicing. Simultaneously, my classes have given me skills to perfect other interests of mine, like photography, painting, and my art styles. Since I've been at FITM for three quarters, in my second quarter, I became the president of BSU. And what I like to do with BSU is I like to give black students a safe space where they can be themselves and speak candidly about their experiences. I would like to create a sense of community amongst the black students at FITM. That's my plan. I'm also on the executive board for Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. And our main goal there is volunteering and helping the community of LA. Oh, wow. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And, and, and Rocky, since you're on that point, and, and, and let's start with you, because you, you just mentioned, I mean, that the, the, the theme of tonight is creating that safe space and building community. Can, can you share with me what that looks like? Because we might have uh, viewers in, they might be still in high school, they might be in their communities. How, can, you, can you give us, wh- how did you do that space? And what was the feedback from the other BSU members when you were trying to create this space? What are some key things No matter where we are, we're doing this as a professional create space or a social create space. What have you learned about what what are some of the ingredients to create that space? Well, for me personally, being from New York City, I have a strong sense of community because I grew up in a neighborhood where being neighborly was still a concept that people appreciated. And so for me, it's like, say, if you run out of milk, you can ask your neighbor for it. If your kids were outside playing, you knew the neighbors were watching out for their safety. Whenever you threw a function, that was opportunity for the neighborhood to get together and laugh and make memories. And I've kind of noticed the same thing doing BSU. Most of the BSU students right now are young. They are around the teenage age and they're all craving this deep connection. They wanna go out together and do things together and it's almost fundamental for them. So for me, community is, I feel like it's the foundation for everything. I feel like a safe space is a necessity where if you don't have a safe space, you'll find it much harder to produce your best self when it comes to absolutely anything that you're trying to do creatively or business wise. And so I feel, I feel very strongly about creating a safe space. And it's not the easiest thing to do because to have a safe space, you have to be vulnerable. And so I found for me to help create that safe space, I produce, I put myself forward as a vulnerable person. I speak to them candidly and openly, not as like I lead them and you just follow me. It's like a, I'm here to help you. Whatever you need from me, I give you kind of conversation. Okay. And so that's kind of how I handle it. Oh, excellent. Okay. So, so what I want to do is open up the conversation because all of you are just incredibly creative people. And so what I, what I want to ask you, and I'm going to go to TJ uh, first, how do you create a safe space for the creatives? Uh, Cause some of us come from families where the people aren't not necessarily that creative or communities. They're not necessarily that creative. And then out pops you three, you three. So uh, with, with you, TJ, how, how do you, from a professional standpoint with, with the Black Design Collective, how did you do that? And, and what are some of the, the, the trials and tribulations or, or, or if someone wanted to do that, to replicate what you've incredibly done in downtown LA? Can you, mm-hmm. can you share that story with us, please? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, with the um, and it actually comes from several several angles, and and I'll start with the Creative Center first, sure. uh, with Black Design Collective and our Creative Center that we created. Um, now, the Creative Center uh, started first with uh, uh, Fashion Tech Works, which is there in the New Mart as well, uh, but also with us partnering with them and doing a collaboration. Uh, but then, you know, realizing that what we were really doing was forming a community. 
uh, and this community consisted of just not us, but now we have Apparel News, which is the publication from the industry has been around for like 50 years or so. And we also have uh, Tuka Tech, who actually come on board as well to be one of our partners as well in the community. We also have Coinit, who does they do digital printing uh, all around the world and have all kinds of equipment. Uh, and we also have other alliances as well, even with a lot of instructors from different um, educational institutions too around Los Angeles. Um, and with this too, what we've done is form this community that we can take something from concept to finished product. Um, we also have a, a podcast room. We also have a content creation room, photo studio, where you can do a, your, your photography. And we also have a space where you can have events and also have a runway and digital screens that align the space as well. So it's a space that's full circle or 360 as far as the creative is concerned. So that space in itself is inherently um, a space that's safe. And we okay. make sure it's that way, even in terms of our security and those kind of things too around the space. And another thing that we're doing as well too is through cross colors, we realized coming back again with the brand that we really wanted to create a, a safe space and actually a safe space mentally for others too, to feel that our brand is more than just a clothing line where we're selling clothes. So we created a mentorship program. We have within Cross Colors, a mentorship program navigated first through the HBCUs, but now we have the BSU um, program that we have as well. So we also have product that goes with both of those too. And in that we have full on classes that we do each quarter or each wow. semester for the students in terms of our mentorship program as well, where we get them to voice their opinion. They tell us what they want, and we actually go through the process of giving them those, that space and time, and also the energy to actually create the things they want to do. Wow, that's exciting, exciting. Uh, so Sasha, if it feels to me that you're on the road a lot, how do you create that safe space in in and how the world that you are? Because you're, I mean, you're, in, you're, you're you're at the Super Bowl, you're at these places. Well, what are some of the things, and, and, and if there's other places that you're doing that as well, but it feels like your safe space have to be on the road while you're professionally traveling. Can, can you share how, how, that, how you can do it um, that way? Having my nice tight group of friends and support system, um, having good health and wellness, emotional wellness, physical wellness, spiritual wellness, all of that is really important. Having a routine, mm -hmm. um, having my community here that I check in with and that I meet up with and going to events that the Black Design Collective has, that's always one of my <laughs> recharging points and meeting other people and talking to them about their projects and networking and collaborating. Um, I think, yeah, it's, I'm always, I'm always doing a bunch of things, but what I, what I enjoy the most is meeting other people who are in a similar boat, who are other young black creatives, who are other also doing different things and finding ways to, where we can collaborate and we can all work together and we all can lift each other up and all level up at the same time, I think is really important because it's it is hard <laughs> it's a lot of work and having someone who can who can be an ally and who can do half the work and you and we like take a take a share the workload a little bit and kind of like take a little bit of off your back take a little bit off my back and we we tag team I think is just so much easier and it also provides more opportunities um and it also it gives a it gives a, a feeling of safety and security that it's harder if you just, even if, I mean, I do a lot of stuff by myself, but like having that really helps. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay. And, and do, um, could you also elaborate? I mean, you're associated with the, the concept of Afrofuturism. Can, can, you, yeah. can you elaborate on, 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 on that concept? And, and is that a, a mechanism or a tool for creatives to, to, to help in that space as well? Yes, 100%. Afrofuturism to me is creating how I want the world to be. And so that's that's design, that's color, that's aesthetic, that's community. Um, the designs that I, that I had in my debut collection, it, a lot of it was Afrofuturism, a lot of it was avant-garde streetwear, where it's 
my idea of what I think of as streetwear, which is a little bit different than the mainstream that you'd buy in a store, but I see it in the future. I see it where you have all these different things come together. It kind of is a little bit more weird and out there and um, it just kind of pushes a little bit more boundaries and asks more questions. And I think it's important to just keep being curious and keep exploring and not trying to just, just not trying to do the status quo, but like just, it, it just keep on trying and asking and figuring out what kind of feels right. And then just run with it. <laughs> okay, no, that's excellent, excellent, excellent. And I like to also tie, to, Rocky, you, you're from New York City. How you, you, you came a, way across country um, to the other side. I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania, so I understand that. How do you recreate that safe space? Um, and, and for a lot of us, we kind of come alone, right? And, and we kind of have to, because some of our audience, it, it, you know, coming out of COVID, it, it's harder to make friends or, or to engage because, you know, we've got these habits coming out of, you know, out of the cave where we don't really want to engage too much with people. How, or, were there some things that you did so that, that you, that made it easier for you? Because you went, you came here and then you were actually the president of BSU. So you're, you're, fought, you're leading, I would probably say a lot of black students who are not necessarily from the East Coast. So what are, what are some of the things that you did to kind of create family or that bond with, with, with a lot of your, your, your students from totally different places? Honestly, I kind of pulled on a lot of what I went through when I first got here okay. because I didn't move directly from New York, but I've moved so much since I've lived in New York that I've had to adapt a lot to new people and new areas. And I know how hard it can be to move to a city you're not familiar with, to have a whole new workload and go to a university that's not like any other university and then live in housing that's not like any other housing. It's a lot emotionally. And so when I became the president of BSU, I kind of knew what they needed because I would just kind of listen in on their conversations and be like, okay, we're all going through the exact same thing. And so I kind of just let my instincts drive me. It's natural for me to want to support people emotionally and be like, okay, you're having a sad day. I'm going to come over and help you, you know, that kind of a thing. And in that and realizing that my struggles was my way to figure out what they needed, I started to make events for BSU to do outside of just in the classroom. Because even though we're connect connecting in the room and I you know, get opportunities to bond and not necessarily have something to do like game day that we did, when we go outside of this room, I'm like, oh, we're gonna have like, we're gonna paint together and watch movies or we're gonna have a horror night or we're gonna do like a potluck. And this is all things that we did. And it gives them a chance to talk with each other emotionally because when you start sharing experiences and struggles, it helps you realize like, oh, okay, you've gone through the same thing I do. And it creates that safe space. And that's how you kind of start to build a community. But it definitely wasn't easy because downtown LA is a little spread out. LA is very spread out. And so finding community here was very hard. And you really got to like work at it now. Like yeah. it's not like when you were like 10 and you made a friend easily, like you got to work at like building a community now. So that's just kind of what I did. I just come from a place of vulnerability and like, what would I want if I was someone who was new and okay. had no clue what to do, you know? Wow. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I have to say, uh, and, and I love TJ because because he kind of walked through what his center does, but I don't think people understand, and that's why I want to dig back. I want to come back to you, TJ, because you, you have to you have to walk us through each of those rooms because you've created on a professional level, and you're and you're very close to 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 fit them in downtown LA. I mean, you've created a space where creatives who look like us can be a involved in the, in your center can you can you just kind of go back to what you guys have there because i don't think and you know i got a little gray here i don't <laughs> think i've ever heard this entity that you have anywhere in the world what you what you've done in downtown la so can you please kind of go back to you know as as people come to downtown they want a safe space you have a professional safe space from what i hear can you go back and just Go back mm -hmm. to each of those people because you talked about the podcast. Can you just go into those rooms not a little bit more in detail? Problem. Thank not you, TJ. Yeah, not a problem at all. Yeah, we're we're very excited about the space. And the space is 
again, it was it was done out of the premise of helping creators of color navigate the industry of fashion. Mm -hmm. And with that, we realized that we needed to really infuse education in that plan also. So that's why we have the space. It's an open floor space or plan for uh, conference rooms. We also have a space where you can come and in an open space to also set up your computer, Wi-Fi access as well. You can rent the space out, um, wow. have access for the hour. You can have it for the week. You can also rent it for the month or even a year as well, because we have conference rooms that are private around the perimeter of the room as well that you can also go in. And there are different sizes also for those. Um, the, the place also, once you leave that space, Space, and we call that like the WeWorks for fashion room. Okay. Uh, once you leave that space, you can go into the content room, which is a photo studio, where once you have your product, you've designed it, you made it, and you're ready to start to promote and market it, you can go into the content room, which is a photo studio, take photographs, and you can have those for your social media, for your website, also for your lookbooks and those kind of things too. Any kind of visuals you need, you can create them pretty much there and even do video uh, as well in the room. Uh, then we also have a podcast room where once you get that content, you get your video and also make your video even in the podcast room, you wow. can promote your product there as well to the public. And so that's another way for you to get exposure. And then down the hall from there, we have what we're really proud about is our um, room where we also have the, the cutting, cutting tables. We have the irons there as well for the steam irons. Wow. We also have the um, sewing room, which we're really proud about with uh, all Juki machines in that room where you can sew up your garments in there. And that room is important as well as the rest of them for training because not only do you have access to it, but we also do classes and the classes are going to start full-fledged this summer. We're okay. going to start our first um, courses this summer, teaching sewing and pattern making and also some digital programs too as well, Photoshop Illustrator and digital pattern making as well. Wow. Uh, and then what we, um, we also have access to, again, um, digital printing as well, resources. We have resources for that as far as the equipment, but also for the access to get your things printed as well. And we've also uh, have proof of concept of this because we also took something through the process and got an entire collection done in a week while working with our community partners. That's incredible. And it was uh, digitally printed onto the garments, sewn, cut, everything else, and on the runway within seven days. And that was last June that we actually did that. Uh, that was with the owner's wife who manages the building okay. uh, of the new Mart, uh, Cindy Kiefer, who actually did that collection through uh, Cornique and also through um, Tukatek as well to do uh, have access to that those items. And then on the third floor, that's the second floor. Then on the third floor, we have uh, over 17,000 square feet of event space. And plus we have a digital screen that is on the back of a runway that's built out is where you can actually have a runway show. You can also uh, have a trade show as well there with your products also. Uh, so it's full 360 experience. And the building is located right on the corner of Los Angeles and 9th, which is in the heart of the fashion district. And in that building as well, you have um, sales reps. So okay. once you get your collection done, you can go through the building and one of the, the four buildings on that corner actually, and find a sales rep to actually sell your product to the stores. So it's a, it's a, a lot of information and it's, it's centrally located. And it's, I don't think it is, it hasn't been done anywhere else. Okay. And we wanna make sure that we keep it and sustain it too as well. Uh, and it's a small footprint too, which also goes back to sustainability as well. Okay. Wow, that's that's incredible. And and, and how can they get more information? Because I, I know in the chat they they put your your Instagram information. Does the does the Black Design Collective have their mm -hmm. own website? We have. We certainly do. Mm -hmm. okay. It's blackdesigncollective.com. Okay. Uh, yes, you go there and you can navigate through and you can find the information on the organization. And you can also send an email to info at blackdesigncollective.com and we will definitely respond back to you and give you information. And it's a membership-based organization too as well. And our membership okay. is opening up in May and we have members from students to professionals. And so everyone's welcome to join uh, as well. 
Wow, that's excellent. And, and, and I'm glad that, that you mentioned that because one of the things I wanted to ask you, and again, uh, for those of you who are listening, uh, put your questions in a QA, and uh, a and I would definitely uh, ask the panelists, as you can kind of see, um, they're eager to, to, to share their information. And one of those things that you were mentioning, TJ, and I want all of us to, to, to chime in on this is, uh, and, and your facility, it, to me, is an example of building that community. I, I want uh, Rocky and, and Sasha, can you also share in what your ideas of building, how do you build the communities? Because uh, this is Black History Month, and one of the things, and I was mentioning to someone before, it's like, you know, Black History Month actually started at Black History Week. Uh, then it went to a month. And so hopefully it'll just be a part of the natural conversation in America, but we're not there yet. So we really need to start to build these smaller circles. So TJ did an incredible uh, thing downtown in, in downtown LA. Uh, Sasha and, and, and Rocky, either one, I don't want to always keep us in order, but can you chime in on what, you, what your thoughts about uh, how so, some of our viewers can build that community and then support, and to me, support each other. And I think what, what the Black Design Collective with that center, I mean, that's incredible. I mean, folks, I don't know if, if everyone in this in, 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 that's here understands what that means to be able to go somewhere. And there's so machines already there. There's podcasts up there. And what, what and I, I have to just chime in on it. You brought a product from just zero, from a thought to paper through production. I mean, that's, and, and lastly, exactly. TJ, when, when, when they're there, do they get a chance to meet you? <laughs> uh, most of the time, yes. Okay, there you go. Um, all right, yeah. so, I'm, so I'm see, there. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to take all the excuses away. <laughs> Folks, see, this is a real person and he's putting together real things. You have real people on, the, on this panel now. They're giving you real suggestions. They, they do superhuman things, but they're human, right? And that's why I want you guys to chime in. This is the time. To ask the questions. And so uh, with that, so Rocky and Sasha, can you share what, what your ideas of, of, of thoughts about how you build community and how, how and, and what are some practical ways of how we can support each other? And, and we'll, we'll, we'll start, we'll, 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 okay, we'll start with, with Sasha. Go ahead, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think doing projects within the community obviously the black design collective is one of my favorite um i was very bummed that we didn't have a meeting a community meeting this sunday <laughs> it's a fashion week i was ready and um, we didn't have it um but i think yeah doing projects within the community actually this august i painted a mural with moa and it was um with moa through fitum and I did it in Palmdale. Okay. And um, we had a 20 foot wall in an all black, in an all mostly black park. Okay. And we, it was really cool. It just paint, got to hang out with the community, paint, um, paint a like 20 foot mural and be there all week. It was with Muhammad, it was of Muhammad Ali. And we were there the whole week and it was just me and my friend and got to know every single person who's from that area, who grew up there, who's lived there. They, they brought us food. They gave okay. us, they gave us shade. They brought shelter. They would give us water. It was a hundred degrees. And we would ask them what they wanted in, in the mural. And we had a whole different design. And after meeting everyone, we're like, nah, we'll, we'll scrap it. Everything we'd pitched, everything just, we changed everything on the, the second day. And doing things like that, where you, where you get to actually know everyone who you're working with and around, I think really changes everything. And then actually just doing the little things to show up with them and um, help them and see, and, and show, let them know that you're, you're trying to come with help and also with empathy, but you're not trying to come in, um, you're doing it in an authentic way as a friend, okay. as an as a helping hand and also as a creative. So like some of these people are artists, some of them weren't artists and they were like, I don't know how to do, <laughs> I don't know how this, maybe do him 
paint it with this and this. And so they, they would give us all this critique and it was cool because no one will ever just, no one will touch that mural. And that's one of the other things. A lot of people vandalize murals. They have at least 20 people who, who will, who just sit there and they're like, oh no, these, they, these, they're good. Just let them keep doing their thing. Don't ruin the artwork. And I think it's, it's, it's that kind of stuff. So like doing classes, if, if it's like teaching other people skills that you don't, that you have, that they're trying to learn, um, it could be doing workshops. It could be having mentees and mentors. I think that kind of stuff is really important. Um, yeah, I would love to do more of that kind of stuff. Oh, excellent. All right. Uh, and Rocky, could you chime in on for, for us, please? Of course. I just want to say that I think what Sasha just said is absolutely amazing. Like, that sounds like something that was amazing <laughs> to be a part of. Like, that's so cool. And I feel like to segue into that, I feel like that's one of the best ways to be practical about building a community is just showing up. That's wow. like the first thing you can do is to just show up, you know, like it can become overwhelming. Like, how do I get this? How do I talk to this person? Like, just show up, even like the smallest of ways, just show up for your people. And I feel like that's why the artisan market is so important because this is a great way to build community, especially amongst our people, putting on an right. event like this that highlights the hard work of black entrepreneurs and gives them a spotlight to showcase their talents is incredibly necessary. Some of these businesses are small, only like locally known while others have like definitely made a name for themselves already. An event like this makes it easy for black owned businesses to get their name out there and to network with other black entrepreneurs. And so networking, sharing tips and bringing in business for each other is another way to build community. A community event like an artisan's market is a good way to bring people together from all walks of life and give them something to bond over. It's kind of like a farmer's market in that way. Like we need more opportunities like this because if you present people a chance to connect and build a foundation amongst each other, more times than not, they're going to show up for it. And that's how a community forms. Just being present and utilizing absolutely any way, any networking opportunity that you have. Like right. For me, I've met so many different people at FITM, like yourself, Andre, and TJ Walker, and Sasha. And it's like, before FITM, I wouldn't have known these people. But now that I know you guys, I can learn from you and pull things from you to help further our narrative, which is to build a community amongst Black people and to further our legacy. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. So as, as promised, we have some Q&A questions. So you guys ready for, to take on some Q&As? So the first one, and, and oh, they, they said anonymous. Hey, I was going to give you guys shout outs. So you, use your names. You know, I, I teach branding. It's always good to throw your names out there. But OK, we'll, we'll go with anonymous. So the first question actually is for uh, Sasha and Rocky. And, uh, and anonymous wants to know, how do you like FITM as a Black student? So what's uh, your experience currently, Rocky? And what, would, what was your experience, Sasha, when, when, we, when you were at FITM? Um, my experience currently is definitely one way to put it is an experience. Okay. Um, FITM is great in a lot of ways, but like many schools, they have their downfalls. And as a Black student, it is really important for me to build a community amongst other Black students. When you get to FITM and you walk through the halls, you'll kind of notice that every Black student is independent. They're their own person. They have their own energy. They're not quite open the talk and it can make you feel like, okay, they're in their own world. I don't want to talk to them. Talk to them. Like, yeah, okay. Say hi, say hello. Majority of them are ex extremely friendly and they're all looking for a reason to connect with other black students. And so I don't, I'm trying to not to say the wrong thing, but being a black student at FNM is definitely it's definitely an experience, but you learn a lot of new things, like coming out of your shell for once, because I'm very introverted and shy, and I've okay. definitely come out of my shell a lot being at FITM, because you learn how to network, and you get in touch with other creatives, which for me personally, I didn't grow up in a creative household. I don't know any other creatives, and so I've really only had myself to ask myself creative questions, and so being in a building full of other Black creatives that pull creativity from their Black experiences is absolutely amazing and you learn so much from other from so many other students because some of them are like older and some of them are younger some of them have their own businesses so it's really great in that way well okay so so it's important for institutions 
to, to give you these tools to, to build these spaces because and you're and you're doing it now so that's excellent so so Sasha as, as a as a as a graduate what was what was your ex experience at FITM because it, it's it's a little bit I don't think you were you, you were at FITM when they had a BSU no were you when at they had what when they had BSU I don't um, maybe okay. I'm not there honestly, it might have it might have been there when I was when I was there, but I did my undergrad uh ten years ago. Okay. And okay. I was just there for a PD program. Oh, you know, it wasn't and, there. I, and I was working, and I'm like, I'm trying to get my all I can do is get my homework done and work my job. I I can't even do that. So okay. all the extracurricular I kind of, I definitely missed out on. Um okay. and I wish I did actually utilize that more. Uh, I, because of Miss Joni in at FITM and like Simone in the Career Center, I found my, I found my um like the mentors within the within the school where oh. I go to when I'm like, how do I navigate this or what do you think about this? And they're kind of they're kind of like the role model and mentors on campus um, that have been there for a long time and that have worked in the industry in varying fields. And those have been my, like, those are my rocks. Those are my rocks on campus for sure. And even Kevin Hall, I took class, I had a class with him in, during the pandemic. And through that, I actually worked with him after. Okay. Um, I worked as a textile designer for him for a collection. Um, but that, I think it's, it can be challenging because you go from a place where you, there's more diversity to, to less of it. Okay. And so you can feel, you can feel isolated and you can, it can be hard to be creative and have your voice and have, feel okay having your voice because that means you have to be vulnerable and talk about like identity and social problems and all these things. And like, people might look at you kind of crazy. I was in debut. There was actually another black student. There's two of us. And we both did identity collections. I did a collection that was all based off of natural hair and hair shapes and silhouettes and styles I wanted all black models and trying to like if there wasn't another black student in the class it would have been much harder for me to be like I want all black models and I want this music I want this vibe and just even and even going about explaining why th these this collection is important why the silhouettes are what they are and the symbolism of natural hairstyles and like what that means in our community and having Joni be one of the chairs of the fashion department and her being like this is what we need thank you for doing this like having her co-sign my ideas okay. was just it was exactly what I needed and like people like that we we need more people like that um I'm glad that we have a. I'm glad that we have a few of them. I wish we had more because for every department, if we had one for every department, not just for like a couple of departments and a couple of the different areas, like students can thrive and just hit these milestones that they might be scared to reach just because of asking for help or reaching out or trying to like find that person that they feel comfortable with um, if they're not in their department already. Okay. Excellent. Uh, TJ, I, I like you to tackle that same question from a, a from a FITM instructor's perspective. Could, could you could you elaborate on, on what that what that experience as as a, as as a black instructor at FITM? Um, you know, I've been teaching at uh, FITM for now over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that uh, I always felt um, always welcomed at FITM as, as being an instructor. Uh, and definitely in terms of the, uh, the student population, uh, there's never been any, you know, anything there in terms of that as well, as far as, um, you know, the, um, uh, in terms of interaction or anything like that. But I do find that, you know, I am, um, I'm always happy to see uh, students of color in my class. I, I mean, it just, it really makes my day. And, and not in terms of favoritism or anything like that. It's just in terms of, I just love that because I'm going to, and I'm, I'm typically 
um, you know, and I encourage all my students, and I am not impartial to any of them, but I, I love to see that, and I love to see how they navigate the class as well. Because when you come from a different uh, perspective, I mean, I'm originally from Mississippi, uh, and in Mississippi, it was, you know, it was just a black and white thing anyway there, and, um, and the schools I went to were integrated, mixed schools, okay. um, but coming out here to Los Angeles, especially going to specific schools, and I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you a comparison, and it's just not a comparison of schools, but in, in terms of demographics. Um, I teach at um, uh, different schools. I teach at a school in St. Louis, I teach at a school, uh, I teach at LA Trade Tech, and I teach at Bidham. And all the schools are different in terms of just how the students approach their work in a way. Uh, and it definitely, it, it definitely is reflected in their, um, in their upbringing, in their um, background, and then the things they like as well. It's not a, it's not a sense of, you know, um, you trying to make them do or form them for the most part, they pretty much already know what they want to do and <laughs> kind of how they want to do it. It's just your job is kind of just steering them in the direction where it, you know, they have some kind of process to the method of doing it. Okay. Uh, and that's what I try to do. I don't try to correct or change anyone's uh, perspective. And that's anyone. And I say that goes across the board with the with the students as well. But I do think that sometimes um, culturally we might get in our own way a lot okay. of times, sometimes, or isolate ourselves, uh, you know, because we feel like that's because we feel like we can't be included or maybe shouldn't be included. Uh, because I know I felt like that many times, you know, when I would walk into a space, mm -hmm. you know, you because when you walk into a space, you feel a certain way. Okay. And those in the space feel a certain way, you know, but you yourself, I think it's good for you to walk into those spaces where you feel uncomfortable and then make yourself comfortable. That's how I feel. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And so from a Q&A, Miles Jackson asks, advice for networking on campus. So uh, maybe that, that'll that go to Rocky. So Miles Jackson's asking, advice for networking on campus, Rocky. Uh, my advice? Personally, I'm going to speak a little personally here. When I first started networking, I kind of call it, um, I turn myself on when I go to FITM. And so I go in, I have a smile on my face. I expect for people okay. to talk to me. I expect to talk to people. I'm not usually in that mindset. So I have to be ready to engage and have a social meter. But anytime somebody walks into a room and you see them, immediately say hello. Hi, okay. I'm such and such. Introduce yourself if you have a business attached to you introduce that business because you're never sure who you're talking to and who they're connected to. And a lot of ways to get like internships or jobs somewhere is because they'll be like, oh, I met someone who's a stylist. I know a place like you guys could work, you know? And so when you go in there and you're like, how do I network? Just speak to them with a smile. I'm such and such, carry the conversation because most people you network with, they're very approachable. They're, they talk a lot. They, they want to talk to you. People like students. And so they want to talk to you. They want to figure out where you're coming from and what you want to do and how they can help you. And so just speak to them with a smile and just like carry on the conversations if you were incredibly engaged, you know? So oh, excellent. Okay. Like that's my best advice for networking. No, that's incredible. So uh, Ricky Rockstar Barbie asks, and this is probably for Sasha and for TJ, how would you suggest finding manufacturers? And we'll, let's jump with Sasha because she's all over the world. How do you find those manufacturers, Sasha? I have not done production yet. Uh -huh. um, I There's a place here in downtown LA I would actually do I would, I would do them local. Oh, okay. um, it was, it's from networking. Actually, it was a person I worked with many years ago, years ago, and they have, they have a whole facility to do cut and sew and samples. Um, but all of them, uh, all the other ones I found that are local, they're all from people through FITM. Um, in terms of overseas, TJ's, TJ's the, going to have all the info. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I suggest that if you want to find a manufacturer, first you have to identify what you want to manufacture, where there's going to be like a denim, which is a woven or a knit and all that. But if you go downtown to Ninth and Main and Hill and Los Angeles Street, 
any of those tall buildings right there, walk mm -hmm. in the building and just start going floor to floor. You're wow. gonna find manufacturers. They're right there. Okay. That's where they are. And then if they don't have the answer for you, ask them who does. Okay. Because people are typically nice, especially when they see that you're trying to make something. Mm -hmm. And if you have something you wanna make, it's really good to have a sample with you, if you have a sample. But if you don't, just go and just start to look and ask and just kind of know what you want to get made. Uh, and okay. you'll find them down there mm -hmm. on Australian Street. Now, overseas, there's different ways to do that. And uh, for overseas, um, you know, a lot of people will just go into Alibaba and just uh, find uh, someone there to actually do something for them as well, because that is a shortcut also. But you can also just put in international uh, manufacturers and specifically which countries you want to go to, whether it's going to be. And China is known all around the world for being a place that a lot of people go. But now a lot of people are, are navigating to Europe and also to Central America to do production as well. So those are great hotbeds now to look for uh, manufacturing overseas as well. Oh, okay. Excellent. Wow. These guys, you're getting some incredible knowledge here, folks. And, and TJ didn't even charge you, neither did Sasha, right? right. So ooh, this, is, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is building that community. Uh, and, and then I have uh, uh, another anonymous wants to know, how did you guys find your niches? Like, how did you... Like, how did you get to your major lane or your professional lanes? Because I'm sure a lot of the people watching, there's so many options, but how did you guys personally narrow it down to the niches that you guys pick uh, when it relates to fashion? I took a detour. Okay. <laughs> Sasha took a detour. Okay. Um, I thought I was going to be, a, I thought I was going to be a dancer and muralist oh, okay. uh, and sign painter. And, um, I did paint, sign painting and murals for about 14 years and kind of was like, well, this is this is great, but I want to try something that's a little different that uses all my skills under one roof because it's sign painting, it's hand lettering, it's painting, it's, I love fabric, I love be, using my hands and sewing and beading and dyeing, I love screen printing, I love doing all those things and it took literally being trying to figure out what to do and uh being injured to have time and think okay. to realize like oh textile design uses every single one of those things under one roof let me specialize in that um okay. yeah but it took a while <laughs> oh excellent all right hey that, that's the hey that you know that's the best way uh rocky and then we're gonna uh have um, kind of to add on to what Sasha said, if you sure. can find a way to encompass everything you want to do under one umbrella, I would say definitely do that. But if you want to focus on one thing to kind of perfect it, my way of going about it is if you could do it, not get paid, do it when you're tired, you know, it can be your motivation to get up in the morning. That's probably your greatest passion. That's definitely what you should focus more on. Because when I narrowed it, it wasn't exactly like, oh, I'm not going to do this. It was more so I'm going to do this later. And okay. this is going to be my main focus for right now. But to add on to the networking thing earlier, business cards, like even if you don't have a wow. profession yet, business cards is so important. Um, I think it was this business card that they make them like a hundred of them and they're like really cheap. This but different. Like, this different. That's this what it's called. Yes. Com. Just like a business email, your phone number, your first and last name, you'll set up your LinkedIn when you get to fit them. But if you want to do that, add that there just so they have your contact information once they leave the conversation. Okay. Business cards are like a lifesaver. Okay. And, and, and TJ, TJ, could you also add the business component of, of, of your niche? Because you're as a business owner, I think it's important for them to, to grasp. You're creative, but you're also, you grasp that business side. Could you? put those two together and yeah Denise. definitely definitely I, I think um you know that really came into to play when we uh, started the uh, collective uh when we started the collective we really uh, you know with the premise of helping that uh creatives navigate the industry of fashion we didn't realize that we need to help uh creatives navigate the industry of doing business okay. uh, because when we found out is that creatives and we all can identify with that, myself included, that in terms of being creative, you love to create your things and stuff and all that. But then you forget that you need to make money until you get hungry. Then you realize you need to make okay. money. You okay. need to eat. 
So, <laughs> but with that too as well, you realize and we realized that we needed to have uh, the legal part, the financial literacy, all those things too included in our courses as well. And that's what we do. With the organization, we have workshops that center around those topics as well. I think even more so than we do as far as the design part of it, because typically we have that covered. We're very creative as creatives, uh, but we need to be, but also too, if you approach the financial and the legal and all the other things creatively, I think it could be fun as well. Okay. And especially as fun when you realize that you can make money and you can make money in this industry, a lot of money very quickly. You know, okay. it's keeping the money is the problem a lot of times, <laughs> but you can definitely make money in the industry. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Man, this, this, this hour has been going so fast. So I want to, I want to kind of do a one, uh, uh, a closing question for all of you to chime in on. And that is how do allies support what we're trying to do in building community? So, so the out, oh, outside sounds so terrible, but, but not people who are not black, who understand how important diversity is what would your suggestions how would how would allies support building these safe spaces and building this community um for for us and wow. as, yes oh, 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 sorry, go ahead, oh sorry go ahead sasha go ahead sasha um i was gonna say um shopping black designers and black brands uh buying black products and learn doing as much research as you can about events that are within your community or in your area that do all those things um yeah oh excellent okay right. and, uh, and uh, go go ahead tj uh, and, then, and then ron you know i'm going to add on to what sasha said sure. i really agree with that sasha in terms of buying uh black brands or brands of color uh, but i also like to add buying good brands oh. black brands of color we don't, I don't, I still am not a proponent of just buying it because it is black or of color. Mm -hmm. I'm a proponent of buying it because it's good quality still. That still has to play in there because then you're reinforcing the fact that it has to be good. Right. As well as of color also. But I also think that it's, it's very important to allow others to come in and to support, especially when they want to help when they genuinely want to help, because I think sometimes we alienate others too as well, you know, even unconsciously too as well from what we were doing. Because, and I, and I tell you from experience because Black Design Collective, that name is what it is, you right. know? And when we, when we mention that name, it all already scares people away that are not of color. And they, and they feel like they have to ask for permission to be allowed to be in that as well too as well so I, I with all of that i just think that it's it's just uh be open to it you know genuinely open to it though the, the ones okay. that are genuine about it that's it and, and rocky can you bring us home and and uh and tell us uh and, and re-emphasize what's happening on f february 25th for me please yes um they kind of both took my points what oh. sasha said definitely shop black owned businesses and definitely what tj said you know be open-hearted and i was going to say that a good way for allies to be allies is to put yourself in those spaces where you can help the black community you know it can definitely feel as if you're not invited in but that's not true you may get pushback from some but still if you go into that community like something like the black artists market and you show up show up with your listening ears on to listen to the black community and what they need what they need from their allies and also exposure if you know any black creatives and whatnot put them on your social medias tell your friends about them all that exposure and attention is great so please do show up to our black artisan market bsu's black artisan market this saturday is at Where? grand hope park right. <laughs> at grand hope park it'll be from 11 a.m to 2 p.m sasha will be there she's one of our vendors she'll be selling her amazing collection there come on, folks gotta and come out black owned businesses will be there i think we have about great. 20 vendors so please show up and show out that would be amazing excellent wow. excellent so so um, um uh, so I want to thank our, my, our, our guests. I want to thank Rocky so much and Sasha and TJ for sharing these jewels with, with our community. Um, this is exciting and, and I hope we, we continue these. So um, that's it for our panels and that's it for um, uh, th this event. And again, just to reiterate, you know, February 25th, Hope Park, bring your 
bring your cash, bring your PayPal, bring your credit card, bring your, the best way to support and build is to, to, to support us financially and spiritually and creatively. Please follow all of our guests, uh, what they're doing. Um, this is incredible. You guys can do what they do with hard work. You can be where they, where they are as well too. So I wanna thank everyone and thank everyone for this event and have a great day. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. everyone. You guys were great. Thank and, you, and, Kidam. And, and again, at the end, you see at the, at the bottom there, you see blackcollective.com. You can uh, you can chime into to fit them. You can be a part of the uh, fit them uh, world. Now that you know there's some students there, uh, please come visit, take the tour. Uh, and if you and if you're on campus and you're a fit them student, you got BSU there. And again, we're going to see great things from Sasha, TJ, and Rocky. Thank you guys. Thank you all. Thank you guys.